What's up people we are back with more of 80 days We just arrived in Berlin in the previous video after being kidnapped by Captain Kasim Who was uh, on an airship And yeah I have the Luckily they were sort of friendly Which is strange for kidnappers you know But they didn't mean to harm us so They dropped us off at um at Berlin here, which is pretty much where we wanted to go, so all is well in the end. So let's continue on our journey. I actually feel like we're at day 10 and we actually haven't traveled that much yet. Uh, we've gone from London to Berlin, which is something that if you actually really put a lot of effort and try really hard to make it really, really fast there, I feel like you could make it in one or two days. But we spent uh, 10 days so far, but we got 70 left. It's fine. We stayed for the night in the Hotel Adlen on Unter der Linden, the main boulevard in the central Mitte district, which is the middle district. Yeah, I paid attention in German class a little bit. I sucked at it, especially because it's all of the dir, den, der, das, dun, and I don't freaking know, but that was so difficult for me. From the window, the Brandenburg Gate was lit up uh, upturned uh, by upturned gas lamps. I decided to retire early. I went for a late night stroll. There's nothing like walking outside with all the street lamps, you know, shining your path. I don't know where I was going with that, but it was supposed to be like a really beautiful setting that you were walking outside and you'd be like, oh yeah. I mean, sometimes walking outside at night, not that I ever do that, like I don't just randomly walk outside in the middle of the night, but I can imagine it to be very peaceful uh, da -da -da, I went for a late night stroll along the avenue, past groups of people, drinking at low tables. I sat down beside a pair of ladies. Oh yeah, you know what kind of charmer we are. What else can we do? I sat with a man who was demonstrating various engine noises. <laughs> to be if someone make goes like room room, or oh, my engine goes like room 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 room, and the other one goes room room, I'd be like. Stay clear from that crazy guy. So uh, I'm gonna go sit next to the pair of ladies who are trying to uh, outdrink the other. They're trying to outdrink one another. You know what? I, I need to travel tomorrow. So the best thing that I can actually do for it to not impact my ability to travel tomorrow is just to keep score for them. I kept score for them as jug by jug they slowly or slid slowly underneath the outdoor table and onto the cobblestones beneath. The evening was uh, righteous and I learned from my new friends Adele and Claudia that Stockholm was linked to Helsinki aboard the Baltic ferry. But the fare was worth saving up for. Ooh, Warsaw to Stockholm to Helsinki to St. Saint, Saint Petersburg. So that's another thing that I've really noticed is that we have a lot of money and we've actually haven't been traveling in luxury. So like normally you can take trains, luxury trains, like I don't know, luxury cars I'm assuming. But we've actually been taking a lot of uncomfortable trips and cheap trips for the amount of money that we have. So I should probably spend a bit more money that because we have that luxury of 10,000 pounds. I should spend a bit more on more comfortable ways of traveling and perhaps faster ways of traveling as well. Berlin, they tell me, was once filled with the glorious sound of people speaking French. Not so anymore. Now there's nothing but crashing of gears. It seems so foul on the streets. We did not go out. Hmm. The crashing of gears. Every street corner is equipped with rotaries and wheeled systems that spin glass globes with way in that what spin glass globes ah like the the christmas globes that you shake and then you see all the supposedly snow i have one of those their purpose is quite unclear but uh, when i notice people walking by uh, quickly pass them or when i investigate we're gonna go investigate ourselves but when i investigated one by throwing my shoes at it clambering up the pole you know what? Fuck it, we're gonna show, throw shoes at it for whatever reason. Throwing my shoes at it, I discovered that they were extremely robust. Not glass at all, I suspect, but some kind of crystal. The mystery persisted until nightfall, when these globes all lit up, and the people of Berlin clustered around the warmth of the globes to drink beer and converse. It seemed they worked hard here, but they celebrate with equal vigor. 
Um, uh, should I? It's time for me to travel, but I can't say no to a party. We joined the merriment, earning ourselves. Oh, we got minus health. I saw it go down at the bottom right. We joined the merriment, earning ourselves the offer of a lift all the way to Bucharest from a stocky blonde man who spoke only in dour mo monosyllables. I sipped at a mug of beer with a thick head and recoiled in horror. These fiends put wheat in their beer. Oh, disgusting. The afternoon turned to evening and we finished our explorations of Berlin. Did we really just go to, um, where did he take us? Bucharest. No, he didn't take us there. Alright, we can depart, hopefully. It's still quite early, it's 11 a.m. Um, I was planning to go here, right, to Moscow. Can I go there though? Warsaw arrives today. Embark. North German Express. Am I still gonna go through with the plan of going to North Korea or not? I kinda wanna go there. Let's go to Warsaw. The North German Express to Warsaw. This tra looks like a bearable route. Hell yeah. I mean, it only takes a couple of hours, so... I think... Choo choo! The newly uh, amalgamated German Reich railways made a political point of their efficiency to quiet any r uh, national rumblings. The departures left at the moment they claimed. Not a second before and not a second after. I like the punctuality. I'm not accustomed to such precision. Um, suspected as much, I attempted to plan ahead. Loading all the luggage a full hour early and ensuring Monsieur Fogg was installed the moment the guards lifted the gate. However, in my preparations, I somehow left my own ticket behind. Uh oh, and was forced to buy a forgery from an old woman with only one tooth? <laughs> that sounds reliable. I was forced to jump the barrier. Um. Mm. Is she trustworthy? Like, I'm trying to look in her eyes and then look at her tooth and... I don't know. You know what? She might surprise us. <laughs> We're gonna buy the forgery from an old woman with only one tooth tooth which he used to cut the punch holes into a blank ticket. I was highly suspicious of course of this racketeer and waited for a moment to try the tickets when the guards were not looking. Unfortunately I waited too long as the night pulled away I cursed or the train rather. The guards came to investigate, found my spittle stained ticket and dragged me away. <gasps> Wait are we separated? I spent the night in the station's private cell. Well, my gracious captor sent a wire to Warsaw for Monsieur Fogg to consider bailing me out upon his arrival. Your funds has gone down a little. I knew I shouldn't have trusted the goddamn woman. I mean, she has one tooth. Greetings, Monsieur le Prisoner. So, they have you locked up as well, I see. Hmm, so Warsaw to, um, I guess, um, Moscow. We're gonna visit Putin. I prefer the Kremlin to St. Basil's Onion Domes. Onion? I like onions as a food though. Um, duh, 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 duh. Omsk. I've heard of that one before. I'm told you can reach Omsk from Moscow. Speaking of trains, I understand my childhood sweetheart was stranded in Karimskaya just before the Trans Manchurian Express to Pyongyang went missing. Uh oh, that's actually a bad sign. What if a train goes missing when we're trying to go to Pyongyang? Do tell me more about Pyongyang. Well, the quickest way to Pyongyang from here is through Moscow. Yes, going the right way. But answer me this. I'm in here for picketing pox pockets. You ever picketed a pocket? I don't recall. I, I don't think I stole from anyone, right? No. Although, to be honest, like, he is our... Are we in the same prison cell or not? Because that would kind of change things. If we're in the prin same prison cell, then if I haven't picketed any pockets, then he might make me his prison bitch. So considering that, I should not... I should say that I'm here in here for a worse crime than him, then he will be intimidated and then I'll make him my prison bitch. Hell yeah, that's the plan. Uh, yeah, let's just say... Once, perhaps, in a time of need. Amateur, 
it's your kind that ruins it for the honest thief. <laughs> Is there such a thing as an honest thief? Right, so we can go from Pyongyang to... I want to go to Manila, but we already kind of found out about that. So, let's go to Yokohama. That's, um, I believe that's Japan. P Pangsu Pass. What is that? Is it possible to travel from Pyongyang to Pangsu Pangsao Pass? No such route, I'd wager. Hmm, how about Beijing? That should be possible. I don't know, but listen. They say em Empress Sixi prefers her automatons to be decorative. Okay. Like, some of these things might sound extremely random, but I'm pretty sure that maybe it might not be useful during your first playthrough, second playthrough, but at a certain point, that one information that that guy mentioned about Empress Sisi or something, that might be useful in a certain situation. And then you'll be like, oh yeah, I'll be, I remember that. Or I'll be, more, most likely in my case, because I'm quite forgetful, I'll be like, god damn it, what did he say about Princess Sisi? I spent the day imprisoned, packing uh, backwards and forwards, or pacing rather, not packing, with nothing to do but chew my fingernails to the quick and curse myself roundly. Was this the end of my adventure around the world? Surely not. But then the keys rattled in the iron door. And one of the guards informed me that Monsieur Fogg had vouched for me. A gentleman's word needs no further proof. And so they hauled me from the cell and put me onto the next train. I had never been so grateful to be aboard a locomotive. Thank God. Alright, so we're going on our way to Warsaw. We're just gonna talk with a random woman. Greetings, Madam Hammerschmidt. It's very good to meet you, Monsieur. Alright, so... Um, I think it might be interesting... Let, let's uh, in for uh, Minsk. Minsk is interesting to sort of know, I guess. I understand Minsk can be reached from Warsaw aboard the Belarus Express. You mentioned trains. I've been told my uncle worked in Ekaterin Ekaterinburg just before the Trans-Siberian Express to Irkutsk suffered a fire. Some of these names are so, so difficult. Irkutsk. Right, and then we go talk about Tsaritsin. Sar is it possible to go from Minsk to Tsaritsin? Surely that would not be possible. But now, I will tell you a secret. I think my ha uh, husband is having an affair. Impossible. Impossible, madam. How could he? Why, you are flattering me. I do not like it. What? <laughs> Strange woman. You are flattering me. I don't like it. I don't like to be flattered. Alright, um, Warsaw, I guess, since that's where we're going, so maybe she could tell me more about it. Did you know Warsaw is connected to Helsinki by boats? You know what? Seeing as your husband is cheating on you, I'm just gonna give you an apple. Don't mind if I do. Well, there you go. Can I end this conversation? She's a little bit boring. I mean, she doesn't like that I flatter her, and that's pretty much the only thing that I have to bring to the table. Besides apples, but seeing as I'm out of apples now. Alright, Minsk again. Do tell me more about Minsk. I have nothing to say. Budapest. I should have asked about Sofia. Is it possible to go to... No, no, no. I would hope... I would not hold out too much hope, Monsieur. Sofia. Oh, no. I've forgotten. I'm so sorry. Well, thanks for the useful information. I mean, I don't blame her that she's kind of... Sad, because of her husband cheating, I guess. I was away. The countryside rolled past. And I spent the journey sort of worrying because we're separated from Monsieur... Uh, Fro Fog, right? I almost said Frog. <laughs> and spent the way worrying about my master... How, about how my master would regard this day's delay. It was, after all, entirely valet cost. Alas, Monsieur Fog met me on the platform as I stepped from the train. Apology on my lips. But he interrupted me. Come along, passe partout, he said, and turned on his heel. I hurried after him into the town. Alright, we're at Warsaw. I think that's how it's pronounced in the, in English. The Dutch, like, or at least in my uh, country, you call it Warsaw, Warsaw, which would, because we have like the S-C-H, which is but not a lot of languages have that uh, that specific words in those order and then the way they pronounce those letters. 
So blah 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 blah. It's it's pretty late, I guess. Could look around the market. Uh, at the heart of this ancient market stands the Warsaw Mermaid with shield and sword. Uh, we have an accordion, valuable in Athens, uh, Helsinki, and Minsk. Hmm. Part of the Russian gentleman's wardrobe set. A thick coat of fur that should keep Mr. Fogg warm. You know what? I'm gonna buy this because we're going in Russia, and I'm pretty sure, like, if you just think about it, think about every single. So not not that I'm a conqueror in any sense, like Napoleon or or Hitler tried to conquer Russia and all that stuff. Like we're obviously not trying to do that, but the the thing that always stopped them from actually winning the war in Russia was always the cold, just the temperature and obviously the the extremely cold winters as well. So I don't think it's gonna hurt us that much to have a fur coat. So yeah, we're just gonna buy that. Um, can we actually? Assemble this in a better way. There we go. We can even fit it here. Oh, yeah Although we already b bought three suitcases. Well, you know what? We're gonna be a dealer as well. Not really a dealer, but I guess a trader and seeing as we're we're are we gonna go to Minsk or is it Moscow? Eh. You know what it doesn't hurt to have an accordion, right? It's probably a strange thing to have in your pocket, but what does it matter? Alright, so Helsinki is there, Stockholm, Minsk, and Moscow. The Belarus Express departs for Minsk in two days at 3 p.m. I expect this departure could be altered. Let's negotiate. Uh, it seems they're pretty demanding. Tomorrow, uh, 5.40. We're loading. We're swimming in money. It's fine. 5.40. Let's do it. Thinking we're just gonna have to spend the day here, indeed. Wow, <laughs> I had time for one. Um, I almost called it sneeze, but I guess it's a. Uh, what do you call it? I don't even know what to call it. The sound that I make when the, the sound that you make when you're asleep. It's not sneeze. God damn it! What am I even saying? One snore. That's what it's called. A snore. I had to look at the ground while I was thinking. Like that's that's what I do uh, when I when I'm thinking of something specific. I just look in a really weird random direct direction to make it look like I'm thinking. Like, I do this in, in class as well. I just be like, hmm, and then I look at like the ceiling or just look really really like I'm really trying very hard to think. And in most cases, I actually am. But in some cases, I'm just faking it. But I'll just th then that way it really looks like I'm focused and trying to think. And I'd be like, yeah, that guy is trying very hard. And then, sometimes I actually come up with the right answer. Most of the times I don't though. It's just buried somewhere all the way in the back of my brain. We walk the streets of Warsaw, feeling the air of a different continent all around. In less than two generations, the Tsars have made this little outpost all their own. Uh, there were, But there were the signs of descent on every corner. They have made it much nicer here. I don't know. There's a lot of dissent on every corner. For now, on every building uh, project in the city, they were there were glued pamphlets declaring the Russians to be dogs, fiends, and Philistines. We click quickly turn back. Uh, should we walk further? I mean, I'm not Russian, nor is uh, Monsieur Fogg, so I think we're fine. We walked further, however, and saw no disturbances. It seems all the revolutionary types have been. Uh, placated by prosperity, rounded up and shot. Wow, that's a that's a dark turn it suddenly took. In fact, our hostelier told us later that the pamphlets themselves are produced by, by machines buried by the rebels during the troubles. No one has yet found them to switch them off. But if the pamphlet the pamphlets are made by machines, people are hanging them up though, right? So. You can just let the the pamphlets be made, but just don't hang them up. Mystery solved in Warsaw. Should we explore or can we still depart? I always like to explore because it takes about 4 hours and then it's still in the morning because we wake up so damn early. Going out in the day, I encountered an incredible creature as tall as a house with width. 
uh, with wide, swinging metal arms, like a rampaging giant. I stared, gawping as the terrible machine stomped from foot to foot, slowly rotating, and then I saw that in its chest was a man using levers and switches to operate the colossal device. It was a gigantic walking exoskeleton. Dang, the future is here, ladies and gentlemen, all the way in 1872. <laughs> God damn it, why don't I live in a steampunk world? I waved to him. I watched him work. I ran to him. You know what? Is he dangerous? Like, I'm sure he could, like, pick us up uh, up with that giant claw of the exoskeleton. Pick us up and just crush us with his bare exoskeleton hand. But will he actually do that? I doubt it. So we're just gonna wave. Maybe he's even gonna wave back, you know? I waved to him and he looked down and tipped his cloth cap or cloth cap. What is this thing? Are you safe up there? How does it work? Uh, how does it work? There are two levers for each hand and they work on ball sockets. I'd let you try sir, but I must get on with my work. Aw, oh, that's too bad. I would have loved to try that. That sounds insane. Like I'm trying to think of something, maybe it's a cartoon or a TV show that, that has something similar. that. Or is it, or was it in a game? Maybe it was in a game as well. Was it in the newest Wolfenstein or something? I'm not entirely sure, but it, it sounds really familiar. Like just a hu human inside this huge robot. Or is it, it's an avatar too, right? That movie with the blue people. Yeah, it's definitely familiar, but it's awesome nonetheless. Uh, what is this thing? Sure, let's ask him that. It's a Kodunki, he said. From Novoro Seisk. They shipped a few to help us with the building work. He pulled a lever and the machine drew a massive arm. From Novoro you say. It's a small town on the far side of the Black Sea, he replied. I don't know why they have a surplus of these things. The drawn back arm smashed into a wall and the building fell into a cloud of dust. I jumped back. Excuse me, my friend called. But I must get back to work. What an incredible sight. Dang. That sounds so awesome. Alright. Um, I think we can go. Yeah, we can go to Minsk. Let's go. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. See, this is what I mean. Hell yeah. Uh, Belarus Express to Minsk, the cold weather. This promises to be a bothersome option, but the fur coat from our Russian gentleman's wardrobe set should make things easier. Am I a god at planning or what? Hell yeah. Choo choo, the Belarus Express is on its way. We clambered abor aboard the train. Monsieur Fogg settled in a far corner like a dusty old uncle. And I. Hmm. Should we sit next to him? Like, I sort of feel guilty that he had to travel alone. And sure, I was the one in prison, so actually I was probably in more danger than him. But still. We're supposed to be partners, right? We're supposed. Well, I'm more his valet boy, so sort of. I guess a nicer word of slave? No, not slave, but you know, I'm working for him, so you know what? We're just gonna talk to him, sit next to him, ready to attend to his wishes. He had none, of course, but to be left alone with his thoughts, whatever they were, so we rode in silence. Really, silence? Screw it, converse. Greetings, Monsieur Krasotkin. Good evening, man of France. Uh, Minsk, Mos Moscow. That's the most important thing because we're definitely going to Moscow. One can also travel this way to Moscow, I understand. And the subjects on the subjects of trains. I've heard Herat can be reached from Tehran aboard the Kamer Taj. Okay. Use the apples. I don't think I have apples left. And even if I do, I don't want to waste it on this guy. From Moscow to... Anything else that sounds familiar here? Let's just ask him about Herat. Uh, do tell me more about Herat. Let me tell you that some buyers will pay well for accordions in Herat. I have an accordion. But we have nearly almost 10,000 again. Uh, Bandas Abbas, that sounds like a much easier name. Bandar Abbas, that just sounds awesome. I must go, it is late. Alright, goodbye. Ooh, from Istanbul to all the way to Tehran. 
Herat, Kabul. Oh, so that's uh, Kabul is I think it's Afghanistan. I'm pretty pretty decent at uh, geography. Like, um, actually in in middle school, I think that's the one that's called before high school, right? In middle school, we actually had to learn a lot, at least the European countries, all of that, and the capitals from it. And there's a, what is the the game called? I think GeoGuessr. I played that every now and then, so that was very fun as well. So that's another way of sort of learning geography, right? So I do know my my capitals and uh, countries and whatnot. We arrived at Minsk after nightfall and disembarked. Oh yes, some of our possessions could be sold here. The market opens at 7 a.m., so we're just gonna sleep here. A very cold newspaper man offered me a sip of Turkish coffee at a tram stop in Minsk. My grandfather was French, he said blandly. Uh, then we are compatriots, indeed. I toasted him with my Sumeric tumbler. I do not think so, he spat onto the ground vehemently. I did not know him. He was one of Napoleon's soldiers. Minsk was occupied by the Grand Army during the invasion. He did not speak in a particularly ac uh, accusative tone, but any words I tried to say in reply coagulated on the back of my throat. Ah, I managed to choke out. An unfortunate business. I personally don't have anything to apologize for, you know. I didn't attack them or anything or so, you know. Yes, war is an unfortunate business. And yet, he sighed. I am here. So there is that. Okay. Uh, we head here from Moscow, I think. We will cross Russia to Japan. Uh, how will we know where, where we are going next? Hmm. I replied with a shrug. He nodded. I see. Well, he glances down at his coffee cup. If I were traveling, I know where I would choose to go. And where is that? Tehran, he replied, to my surprise. An unusual choice. He laughed bitterly and tapped the newspaper under his arm. Oh, when I was younger, I knew a woman called Lina Palkala, a Finnish girl. She became a dancer. Now she passes herself off as Slavic and has just been signed up to dance ex exclusively in Tehran. I'm sure I will never see her again, but if I could, I would try. Mm, then go. I can advise you on your routes. There are other women, monsieur. I nodded sim- No, no, no. Just do it, you know? I would never find her. Lina Palkana is gone. Her name is now Marina Pal- uh, Poltavka, Poltavka. Our tram wheezed into the stop, and the conductor opened the doors. Uh, and uh, the newspaper man boarded. Enjoy your coffee, he added, without looking in my direction. I decided to wait for the next tram. Um, or are we going to go with him? You know what? To avoid awkward conversation, we're gonna go and wait for the next tram. But my dreams that night were haunted by cavalry and cannon and soldiers with smiles like sabers. Right, so we're gonna explore for four hours of course, cause that's what we do. New routes discovered from Minsk to St. Petersburg and to Odessa, I think that was called. I spent a few hours in exploration, learning ways in which we might travel onwards. All right, let's go to the market. Uh, we could sell our Korea. Oh yeah, 990, cha-ching. Uh, we have a shaving kit, we can buy a railway cap. The sword worn by train guards as enthusiasts. A uh, shortbread biscuit, the genuine Scottish shortbread. How it got out here is hard to understand. <laughs> safety harness, a safety clip used for attaching to a jack line in heavy weather. Hmm. You know what? Because I feel like we're going to be going on the train a lot, because I think. The main way, especially the main way through travel traveling through Russia, is going to be by train. So we're gonna buy the tr railway cap, and then whenever we we're just gonna wear it, and then the other conductors will be like, "Hey, you like trains? I see." And I'm like, "Yeah, give me discount." And then they'll be like, "Nope." All right. So I don't think we need to go to the bank. Uh, there's not much else here to do apparently. So I think we're just gonna depart straight towards Moscow. 
Uh, which one in particular shall we choose? Oh, that's the guy. That's Mr. Law Man. Law, Law Man One. Yes, four thousand is in day fourteen as well. So we're on about the same schedule. But I have six thousand more pounds than him. Oh yeah. Traveling to Moscow is what we shall do in the very next video because it's gonna take 16 of our health. Holy crap, that's expensive. But yeah, we're gonna do that in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more, and I will see you in the very next video of uh, 80 Days. Peace!